Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars, and you're watching Get This, episode 100 of From the Luthiers Workbench. Man, it seems like I just started this series, but I'm already up to episode 100. Uh, in this episode, I thought, what better way to celebrate 100 episodes than to provide you all with an update on my current guitar projects. So uh, I'll start out by giving an update on uh, the cow skull guitar which I've been working on. This is the cow skull guitar design that I've been working on and this one I actually started a while back. Uh, in episode 80 of From the Luthiers Workbench I explained the technique that I used to create this uh, design using polymer clay. So if you want to uh, see how I did that you can go back and watch episode 80 and of course I'll put a link in the description below so you can click on it and, and jump over to it right away. But uh, what I've done is I took the top, and the top is mahogany, and glued it to a mahogany body. Then I sanded the two down uh, from about 80 grit to all the way up to 220 grit to get it nice and smooth. Then I applied a, it's an oil-based mahogany, red mahogany stain. And I applied that to the entire body, let that dry overnight, and then I began the process of applying uh, an oil-based polyurethane varnish that I mix up myself. And it's it's pretty simple mixture. It's just, uh, it's basically about uh, two parts of the oil-based polyurethane with one part boiled linseed oil and then uh, a splash of mineral spirits to thin it out enough to where it's easy to wipe on. And what I'm doing now is I'm in the process of applying that and I'm applying two coats a day, one in the morning, one in the evening. And then that way it has enough time between coats to dry. I don't bother with sanding between coats because it is an oil-based product so it shouldn't have any issues here. But what the plan is is I will continue doing this over the next couple of days until I have a total of about uh, 10 coats of the wipe-on uh, polyurethane over the entire surface. Then I will be able to um, do a little bit of level sanding and I can do that wet using mineral spirits as a lubricant and I'll start out at 400 grit and then I'll jump to 800 and I'll finish with 1500 and by then I should have a really smooth surface and it's already pretty smooth now but there are some uh, little dust goobers and some uh, rag marks in the finish so that process will take care of it and get the surface really smooth then after that I can um, wipe on a couple of coats of that same varnish and what I'll do is I'll wipe it on and then wipe it off uh, which will uh, take off the majority of it leaving just a very thin film which does a really great job of filling in any residual sanding scratches that uh, could remain so uh, by then it should be a nice smooth finish and I'm shooting for a satin sheen so that's what I'll do for the body. The neck um, I'll approach it, uh, I've approached it pretty much the same way. Uh, I put down, after uh, I had made the neck completely, I put down some uh, straight boiled linseed oil and then when that dried over, after drying overnight, um, I went back in and applied my um, oil varnish, uh, boiled linseed oil, mineral spirits mix, but this time I only applied two coats. I don't need to put more than that on it. And I don't want to get it too thick on the on the neck, so I'll let this cure out for about as long as it takes for the body to cure out, and then I'll go ahead while I'm wet sanding the body. I'll also be wet sanding the neck to get it really smooth, and um, that's coming along pretty well. So this is how the neck looks into the body. So that's a pretty nice. I think a pretty nice look. You got nice contrast with the uh, maple neck. So that's where things stand with the cow skull guitar. Now we'll move on to the vintage sci-fi guitar. Okay, so this is the vintage sci-fi guitar that I've been working on. And if you'll remember, back in episode 98, I explained the technique I use for applying uh, inkjet printouts of the graphics to the top of this guitar. And once that was finished, the next thing I had to do, the surface of this was really rough. It was very 
uneven, lumpy, bumpy. And before I could apply my clear coats, what I did was I slathered on some aqua coat. Uh, this is a clear wood grain filler. It's a water-based product. And it, I can build it up pretty thick across the surface and then sand it level before I start applying my clear coats. Now, one of the questions that came up is, when I clear coat the guitar, was I going to use Crystal Lax Bright Tone uh, instrument finish? And for this guitar, I'm not. And the reason is, this guitar is probably never going to be played. It's going to be put into a glass case and put up for display by the client. So I don't really need to use the Crystal Lac Bright Tone Instrument finish. Um, instead, I can just use a water-based polyurethane, and this is Verathane's water-based polyurethane. It's I can get this at you know uh, Home Depot and places like that, and it's it's very affordable. So I can just spray this stuff on heavily without concern and. Um, with especially uh, with regard to price so what I did was after sanding the aqua coat smooth the next thing I did was I started applying coat after coat of the Verathane water-based polyurethane and I built that up to about 10 coats and I did this over a couple of days spraying it you know every half hour to an hour between coats and occasionally I would do a little bit of light sanding between coats in order to um, take the high spots down and allow the low spots to fill in until everything was level. Then at that point I was able to, after the 10 coats, as I went back over it with some 400 grit, it got it really smooth and flat and, and eliminated all the high spots, all the low shiny spots, got everything level, and then I sprayed on uh, three heavy wet coats and I would spray the top first and let that dry then I would spray the back and let that dry and once I had those three coats built up um, I've been allowing this uh, finish to cure so I'll let this finish cure for probably about two weeks and then I'm going to go back in and do a level polish sanding uh, probably with about um, I'll probably do a an 800 and then a 1500 grit and then I'll be ready to buff it on the buffing machine. And this is the control cavity cover for it which is drops in there and that's a that's Jane Fonda from the movie Barbarella. And as you'll notice on all the graphics it has a very faded look and that was intentional. I wanted this to have kind of a worn vintage look but at the same time, I wanted to put a nice, heavy, protective clear coat finish over the top. So it's not a true vintage relic look. It's more of just a, you know, kind of a vintage feel. Um, faded colors, light, and um, I got exactly the effect that I wanted. So uh, this is the neck. The neck is flamed maple with a purple heart fretboard, and it's been sanded. It's been uh, finished with, uh, it's my varnish mix of uh, oil-based polyurethane with a little bit of boiled uh, linseed oil and a splash of mineral spirits to thin it. And then I just apply several coats, let them soak in and dry for a few days. And then I'll sand it with um, 800 uh, and then move up to like 1500, 2000 grit and then maybe a little bit of a, a, a ultra-fine synthetic steel wool to give a really nice, slick, smooth finish. So that part of it's done. So that's where things stand for the moment on uh, the vintage guitar. Now I'm going to move on to uh, some updates on guitars that are currently on the drawing board. So this is a guitar that I am currently in the process of designing for a client. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but I also have a uh, offshoot of my Highline Guitars business, which is called eGuitarPlans.com. And on eGuitarPlans, I sell a lot of the plans that I design for the guitars that I build. And um, right here on the homepage, I have a whole uh, listing of the different uh, plans that you can purchase. And 
what I sell is uh, a complete full-size, fully dimensioned plan, and it's uh, priced at about eight bucks each. And once you've made the purchase, you uh, get a link to download a PDF file of the plan. So uh, you get the full-size plan, and then you get a plan which has been tiled into smaller sizes so that you can print it out on a desktop printer. And those are available in either letter or uh, A4 size printouts. But I had a, a client who wanted me to build him a Clarksdale, which is this guitar here. Now the Clarksdale is a humbucker single coil, single coil configuration. And what he wanted was a dual humbucker and he wants a lefty. So uh, I've begun the process of designing, drawing up the, the final plan uh, as a lefty with the dual humbuckers, and this is where it stands right now. Now this is a full-size mock-up in color, and I like to do this before I actually start building a guitar. Um, it gives me the opportunity to see what it's going to look like and to give the client an idea of how it's going to look. Uh, oftentimes, Clients will have a variety of different ideas about the type of woods they want to use and the kind of finishes they want. And sometimes when I'm building a guitar for myself, I have all these ideas that I want to experiment with. But um, it's nice to be able to do a color mock-up to see how it's going to look. And that way, if maybe a couple of ideas don't work well together, I can either try some different approaches or sometimes the client is will see what it's going to look like and is inspired by something else and and by playing around with the mock-up and uh, different kinds of woods and different finishing options we can come up with uh, a finished mock-up design that we can call the uh, inspiration for what the final guitar is going to look like and then I can work from that mock-up to to build the final guitar. Now, I know there's some websites out there that have these really cool guitar builder options, but I like to use, uh, or I like to do this individually with each guitar because uh, in some cases I can actually use um, the wood that's going to be used in the actual guitar to show very accurately what it's going to look like. In this case, it's just an indication. Uh, the actual wood that I'm going to use will be a little bit different. So, But this gives me a pretty good idea of how this guitar is going to look. And the client has seen this. They've approved what it's going to look like. And now I can go to the workshop and start preparing the blanks that I'm going to need uh, for making the top, the body, the neck, and the fretboard. Okay, so what I have here are the blanks that I'll be using for the Clarksdale left-handed guitar build. And the top is going to be... This is a lovely uh, book match flame maple, about three eighths of an inch thick. And this will have a natural finish to it. Although I'll probably add a little bit of stain just to kind of help pop out the figure a little bit more. And the body is a two piece alder blank, which I made. And then the neck, the neck shaft is flamed maple. And this has the scarf joint from my angled headstock. Um, so this one's ready uh, to to be machined out on the CNC. And the fretboard is a rosewood, which has a nice uh, straight grain, it's quarter sawn. And this is gonna have a seven and a quarter inch radius on it. So uh, I'll start actually assembling this guitar once all the components have arrived. I've still got a few pieces left to come in and I don't really like to start cutting until I have everything in my hands. I like to be able to measure everything because even though manufacturers will list out the specifications for their parts, they can sometimes change when they move uh, manufacturing from one plant to another or, <laughs> or if there's a shift change. And um, I like to be able to, to measure that stuff before I actually commit to, to cutting. So um, that's kind of where things are with uh, this Clarksdale Lefty build. This is going to be a headless travel guitar. And so right now I'm working on laying out the elements and trying to figure out uh, what kind of components that I'm going to use on this guitar. It'll feature, I believe it's going to be a single humbucker 
in the bridge position. But what I'm what I'm actually struggling with, and maybe some of you out there can um, point me in the right direction. Uh, the issue I'm having is trying to find a bridge and head components for this type of guitar. It's going to be, like I said, a headless guitar, so there'll be no headstock and no tuners. But the uh, the bridge is going to be a, a tremolo bridge, and right now. You know, eBay is flooded with all kinds of headless guitar bridges, but my understanding is, is that a lot of them are junk. Uh, they're inexpensive, but they're junk. And so uh, what I've been looking at is uh, there's a company, J Customs, or it's, I think, it's Headless Guitars USA, something like that. But they have a, a bridge called the, um, the Tremolo 2, and it's a headless bridge design and they also offer a headless net so I'm, I'm considering that one I'm also considering the hip shot tremolo headless guitar design and what I'm finding is that it's hard to get information uh, hip shot I can has no trouble I can get information on their bridges no problem but on some of these other um, companies that offer the products it's difficult to get accurate information, and I'm not really sure who makes the best headless tremolo bridge design. And as you can see, uh, the back of this guitar is, you know, it's, this is kind of a single cutaway design. And a lot of times with these headless tremolos, you've got to cut away the back area for access. And I'm trying to avoid doing that. Um, I'm not opposed to dishing it out a little bit, but I don't want to completely cut it away because I don't want to spoil that shape. So anyways, that's where I stand with uh, this particular uh, guitar uh, project. And this should be an interesting one to see how this comes together. So I'll keep you guys updated as uh, this project uh, proceeds. Okay, well that pretty much covers everything that's going on in the shop this week. And I'm planning to do a quick tips video that will be uploaded middle of next week. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to have uh, episode 101 uh, from the Luthiers Workbench um, for another couple weeks. And the reason is, is I'm going to be taking uh, next week off and I don't anticipate I'll have really time to put together a video in the meantime and, and schedule it for an upload. So uh, you'll just have to sit tight and wait for uh, a future episode to come out in a couple of weeks. But um, until then, take care, and we will see you soon.